First, let me introduce myself. My name is Cik Ramla, Librarian at University Science Malaysia, will be your moderator for today's webinar. I would like to welcome our special guest for today's webinar, Ms. Chen Chuling, Clarity Regional Solution Consultant. Good morning, Chuling. How are you? Hi. Hi, good. Happy New Year. Yeah, Happy New Year. Uh, hopefully, everything is going well and smoothly on your side, and we can't wait to listen to your presentation today. Okay, um, as for now, we have approximately 180 participants from USM registered for the event. They are consisting of researchers and postgraduate students. For your information, JCR or General Citation Report is currently subscribed by USM and can be accessed via library website. Okay, and it should be accessed under off-campus login via open items. Okay, before we start, I want to make a few announcements. All the participants will be given e-certificate and CPD points for USM staff. You just need to fill in our feedback form and the link will be given towards the end of our session. Meanwhile, at any time during the session, you can ask any question related to the topic in the chat box and uh, the speaker will answer it from time to time. Okay, and the last one is for your information, a recorded version of this webinar also will be available later on our USM Library TV YouTube channel. Now we have come to our main agenda whereby we are going to listen to the tips and also guidance from our distinguished speakers. Uh, therefore, without further ado, I would like to call upon our speaker, Ms. Chen Chulin, to proceed with her presentation entitled thank you all right once again a very happy new year to everyone thank you for taking time to join us um, for today's webinar on journal citation reports and how to publish in high impact journals from web of science so uh, first things first as what Chik Ramla has mentioned uh, if you have any questions through the session feel free to put those questions into the chat uh, for me, I would prefer to uh, answer the questions as I go along in the in, in case there are specific um, questions on those sections that I have presented. Okay, so just want to double check that you are seeing my presentation slide. Yes, Jade Ramla can see my slide. Okay, great. Thank you yes, for all can. the thumbs up. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, give me a second. Let me open up the chat so that I can monitor that as well. Second. Okay. Um, so there's two options. There's a Q&A panel and there's also a chat. So um, for me, I, I'm, I'm okay with either one. If you put those questions in Q&A, it's easier to monitor. But if you, feel, if you type those into the chat, that's fine as well. Okay, so to get thing, get us started, um, just wanted to share with you uh, a, a quick overview of what Clarivate is about in case there's anyone who has never heard of Clarivate. So Clarivate is the parent company um, that owns the Web of Science, the Journal Citation Reports, as well as Insights. So for those of you who are researchers or postgraduate students, many of you would have to use some of our resources as you do your research. So probably you'll be using things like Web of Science to find literature to look at uh, and to reference. Then sometimes you might also be using EndNote, uh, EndNote 20. You might be using that to write your research paper. And for journal citation reports, which we are covering today, it is a tool to help you to make better decisions on where to submit your manuscripts for publication. Okay. So to I wanted to share with you some statistics um, for on publishing, just so that you have an idea of the sheer number of journals and articles that you are exposed to as researchers. So this is an old report. This was in 2018, so probably four or five years old. But so definitely the numbers are increasing. Okay, so we are talking about almost 3 million papers published annually into almost 45. 3,000 scholarly journals. And out of all these publications, we have about 
maybe 15,000 plus open access journals in the world. So it's, we're not talking about web of science yet. This is uh, in the whole world. So if in the event you're looking at things like Google Scholar, this is the number of journals that you're probably exposed to. And because of the rise of um, the pandemic, uh, there is more and more open access content. There's more open access journals as well. But with that, it comes with the risk of uh, predatory publishing. So I think one of the key questions or the main topic for today is how to avoid um, publishing your paper in predatory journals. And I also saw that um, earlier questions from the audience also had uh, questions around, how, is it okay to reference predatory journals? So all these will be answered as I go through my session. Okay. So looking at this number, um, if you do not have proper guidance or a guideline to help you to identify or quality check the journals, you, will, you would be in a position of higher risk and losing your uh, manuscript if you ever published in a predatory journal. Um, why is that so? Because there's currently no law in the world. There's no law governing the publication of pre um, your manuscript in the predatory journal. There's no clear definition as well. So when there's no clear definition and there's no uh, legislative law to protect you, what this means is that if you actually publish in a predatory journal, that journal is not doing anything illegal. Okay, the only thing that he that journal is not doing is probably not doing a good uh, peer review process. And uh, in in that event, if you have done your research paper for six months, one year, you publish it there, and it's no it's not recognized by your institution or your um, governing body, then you lose that work that you have because you cannot retreat, retract that paper once it has been published in those predatory journals. So, so what I want to emphasize here is that you have to be extra careful in where you publish or submit your manuscript to. Okay. So to, to help you, the first thing I wanted to share was a simple checklist uh, to help you to screen for the predatory journals. And this is um, uh, in addition to you having access to things like Web of Science or journal citation reports. Because sometimes you just want to make sure um, that maybe that particular journal, that local journal is um, legitimate, um, trustworthy, and so on, even though that journal may or may not be indexed in Web of Science and so on. Okay. So what is this um, checklist? The first thing is, do you or your colleagues know the journal? Okay, it's a very simple question. It's, uh, it sounds very logical, right? Uh, but many times when you're under stress to publish quickly, especially when you only have, what, three years in, in um, university, you get stressed and you get uh, pressured to publish ASAP. And when you see a very enticing uh, advertisement from the journal, uh, calling for papers, saying that uh, it's going to be uh, published very quickly, you might not even go through this question in your head on whether you or your colleagues know the journal. Okay? So this is the first thing. The second one is to see, check whether the, you can easily identify and contact the publisher. Now, there are many established publishers around the world. Uh, those that are big publishers like Wiley, Springer Nature, uh, uh, Walters Kluwer, and so on. These are uh, well-known publishers, yeah? But there are certain publishers that are quite small, that are society publishers. These are publishers that you may or may not have heard of. So it's always good to check and verify that these are legitimate publishers. Make sure that you're able to trace their address, uh, and also what they have listed on the journal is correct. Then is the journal clear about the type of peer review it uses? Now, this is also a very important point. Uh, many predatory journals have the tendency to say, oh, uh, if you send in your manuscript, 
uh, we do express publishing. Express publishing um, meaning that you don't even know whether they've actually done a proper peer review. Okay, so always check um, their, the content on their website to check whether they have stated the type of peer review they use. Uh, in the event that any of you have never published before or don't know what peer review is, it is a check done by other experts in the field. So let's say, for example, you are in, in um, let's say, triple E. Okay, you submit your paper to a journal, then the journal will usually invite an, uh, uh, another researcher that is doing the same uh, research as you to verify that the findings on your paper is true and the results can be trusted. Okay, so this is what we call the peer review process. Uh, the types of peer reviews that are available, there are a few. We have single blind, double blind, and even now there's more and more um, uh, open peer review. So what's the difference between each of this? Single blind would mean that you would probably not know uh, so the, the reviewer will not know who the author is or the author will not know who the peer reviewer is. Double blind means both parties don't know who the name and where you're from. Okay, and op open peer review means that both parties know who you are and um, the findings of the peer review, the comments will be published openly. Okay, so this is uh, the open peer review part is something that we have also started to launch in Web of Science where sometimes you're able to see uh, on the paper itself that there, this paper has been open peer reviewed and you can see the discussions between the reviewer and the researcher before they actually published the official document, right? So once again, make sure that you are able to find and verify that they are doing a certain, um, that they are doing peer review. Then uh, articles indexed in services that you use, okay? Uh, services that you use, um, this would not include uh, Google Scholar, okay? Uh, yes, Google Scholar is, is, is one of the common services that many researchers use. But one thing about Google Scholar or even Google itself is that they index every single thing under the sun, okay? So the tendency of having um, predatory journals in these uh, resources is quite high because there's no proper curation in place before um, this content is indexed on Google. So when I talk about articles indexed and services that you use, what I'm referring to is um, databases such as Web of Science, making sure that the articles are published or indexed in the Web of Science platform. Okay. And the next thing is, is it clear what fees will be charged and what fees will be for? So open access journals, most of the time, um, there will be some kind of article processing charge. Well, there are certain uh, society journals or even um, local journals that do not require an article processing charge, but most of the full go open access journals do require some fees. The reason is because if they, if they did not get um, uh, revenue from subscriptions, where can they get the revenue? Definitely from the authors, right? So definitely there'll be fees charged if you are publishing in uh, Go Open Access journals, for example, uh, and the fees can range from a few hundred US dollars to a few thousand US dollars, depending on the journal, okay? So make sure that um, it's, they are clear on what fees will be collected. And some journals will also require you to pay um, things like color color processing charges and so on. Uh, so do, do check whether these fees are there and declared at the very beginning, okay? Now, the next one is also is extremely important. Uh, I cannot stress this enough. Many of the journals, uh, predatory journals, like to put in um, very big names. So they might put in a lot of Nobel Prize winners into their editorial board, um, uh, advisory board memberships. Um, but what I am emphasizing here is to make sure that you, as a researcher, look at the editorial board, check whether those um, experts are relevant to the journal, that's one. 
Check yeah, whether for the next one dulu lah. Uh, one thing I want to remind all the audience, yeah, the session is being recorded. So if you don't want your background noise to be recorded, please mute your lines. Okay, just remember that. Okay, so back to editorial board memberships. Check and verify whether those editorial board members are indeed from the affiliations that has been declared within the journal. So let's say, for example, Dr. ABC from... Family, family. Community care. Ada dah kan tadi community care tu kan? Ada. Uh, eh, ada ke? Shaswani, Shaswani, uh, you are uh, you are un on unmute. Can you please mute your line? Sorry. Okay. Now, um, so the example that I wanted to share was say, for example, Dr. ABC from USM, um, Faculty of Engineering. So what you need to do as a researcher is to go in to um, USM's website, look for Department of Engineering, Faculty of Engineering, make sure that the uh, researchers themselves, uh, that, the, that particular researcher is indeed there as part of USM's Faculty of Engineering. Okay. Then um, the last thing that you might want to also check this is um, uh, in addition so if the publisher is a fairly big publisher make sure that they are part of an, a recognized industry initiative um, to make sure that they are either participating in those uh, specialization specific uh, in initiatives or things like publication ethics committee so hope is one of the um, main um, bodies governing publication ethics and also check if let's say for example the journal is open access check that it is listed in the directory of open access journals doaj okay. so this is a simple checklist that i retrieved from thinkchecksubmit.org uh, it's not an exhaustive list but it is um, quite a good enough checklist to start with okay so I hope that that uh, quick uh, guidance on how you can scrutinize and look at journals before you publish is uh, useful. And if, for example, you are very busy and you have no time to go through all these verification process, um, it is even more important that you rely on a, a source that has already done that quality check for you. And that's where Web of Science core collection comes in. Okay? So the Web of Science core collection is actually the heart of the Web of Science platform where we curate the journals, conference proceedings and books that are indexed on the Web of Science platform. Okay. So the Web of Science core collection comprises of, this, of four journal indexes, which is the Science Citation Index Expanded, Social Science Citation Index, Arts and Humanities Citation Index, and Emerging Sources Citation Index. So these four are our journal indexes, and later on I'll explain what are the differences. We also have the conference proceedings and the books citation index. Okay, so in total, we are looking at almost 21,000 plus journals in the Web of Science core collection and 200,000 plus conference records and 100,000 plus books. Depending on the access of your subscription for USM, you would probably be accessing the content from 1975 onwards, okay, but uh, on Web of Science core collection, we index all the way back to 1900. Okay. Now, there's a question that came in from Karam Alili, Ali, Alali. So DOI is considered as unique mark for non-predatory journal. Uh, not necessarily. So, so DOI is mainly a document identifier. Um, it's not. It's just some uh, a unique identifier for the article itself. It doesn't necessarily mean or reflect whether a a journal is predatory or not. Okay. Let me check whether there are any other questions earlier on about. Okay. All right. 
Okay, so let me just go on. Okay, so for the Web of Science core collection, what is the difference between the four journal indexes? Um, hopefully this picture will help you and uh, help you understand. So for any journal that wants to be indexed in the Web of Science, it has to go through a curation process. And this curation process makes use of 28 uh, criteria. So if the journal meets the first 24 quality criteria, they will be indexed in the Emerging Sources Citation Index. So the Emerging Sources Citation Index covers journals across uh, different disciplines, okay? but these journals have met our 24 quality criteria. These journals will not have a journal impact factor um, currently. If they meet our four more impact criteria, they will then be indexed into the SCIE, which is Science Citation Index, Social Science, and Arts and Humanities Citation Index. So these are the specialized collections. So these journals here would meet our full 24 quality plus four impact criteria, which is a total of 28. So currently, only the SCIE and SSCI journals this year, uh, based on 2022 uh, journal citation reports, only the SCIE and SSCI journals have a journal impact factor currently. Okay. Now, when I spoke about the uh, checklist, uh, I wanted to also bring your attention to our curation process. So the 24 quality criteria and four impact criteria are listed here on the screen. If you can, if you can look closely at the criteria, many of them are actually part of that checklist that I had shared with you earlier on. Okay, so things like whether there's a presence of peer review policy, um, whether there is um, publication ethics statements, uh, the editorial affiliation details, author affiliation details, editorial board composition, um, uh, presence of peer review. So, so the re presence of peer review policy versus peer review is a little bit different where we have presence of peer review policy, meaning that they declared that they have, uh, they will go through some kind of peer review. Peer review existence means that we will look at the article itself, check um, for evidence to say, to show that they have actually gone through peer review. So a lot of times now, many articles are actually showing um, the acceptance date, the, um, the review date, the final acceptance date. So um, those are the kind of dates that we are looking at, okay? Okay, so um, that's why if you are using a resource like Web of Science that has already done all the curation for you, you can be rest assured that the journals that are published in Web of Science are non-predatory because of our strong um, curation process. At the same time, another thing that I wanted to emphasize about Web of Science is that once a journal is indexed in Web of Science, it doesn't stop there the journal can be delisted from Web of Science. And one of the main reasons is because of unethical behavior uh, down the road. Okay, so let's say there are certain journals that have um, been indexed in Web of Science for say 10, 15 years. And during these years, um, there were changes in the uh, uh, editorial committees. So when the editorial committees change, sometimes the behavior of the journals change as well and it might change for the worse. When that happens, researchers like yourself might come and give us a feedback about those journals, and we will look into this, and if indeed there were some changes and there, um, the, the journal no longer meets our criteria, then we will do a re-evaluation of the journal and delist them if they do not meet these criteria anymore. Okay, so that's something that you have to bear in mind. It's a continuous curation that we have on our platform and it doesn't stop. Okay. 
So that's our content. That's what's in the of science and also how, what you need to look out for, for the, um, to avoid publishing in predatory journals. The next part of the presentation that I wanted to share was some um, viable publishing strategies. Uh, some of you had questions on how do I make sure that my manuscript can be published in high impact journals? How do I identify these high impact journals in Web of Science and so on? So hopefully these strategies will help you and guide you. Okay, now before I go into the strategies, let me just check for any questions. <clears throat> Okay, so I think Richard, you had a question that I addressed early. So uh, assuming that you have published in predatorial journal and you discover after the article is already published, is it possible to send the article again to a legitimate journal for publication? Answer is no, okay, because um, there's no law governing that and the journals that are publishing, so-called predatory journals are uh, publishing, have published your article already. So the copyright actually falls under them. Okay, so that's why it's very important that you make sure that you're sending your manuscript to the right journal. Okay, uh, Rosmi Wati, you have a question. When the journal indicates that they are indexed in Emerging Sources Citation Index, does it mean it is already one of ISI JCR index without impact factor or not yet? So if the journal indicates that they are uh, in ESCI, Emerging Sources Citation Index, first thing you need to do is go into JCR or go into our master journal list. So I'm going to just type in the URL for you, mjl.clarivate.com. Go into those, that website, check whether that journal is indeed in Emerging Sources Citation Index. Don't just trust what they declare on their website. Always verify. Um, if, if they are in Emerging Sources Citation Index in either Web of Science Search, or just JCR Search or MJL Search, then they are indeed indexed in ISI JCR. Okay, um, ISI is our own name, which is uh, Institute of Scientific Information. We no longer use the term ISI to represent Web of Science. <clears throat> Web of Science is Web of Science now. Okay, so just take note of the naming convention. Um, Ala Abu Sanat, you have uh, a question. Do predatory journals have a rank? No. Okay, um, predatory journals tend not to have a quartile. If they do have a quartile, um, you need to check whether um, what they declare as a rank or quartile is indeed their rank in that declared database. So let's say, for example, on the website, they say, oh, we are Q1 in Web of Science. Then First thing you need to do is go into Web of Science, check whether they are indeed Q1 journals in Web of Science. Okay, um, so quick answer to your question, Allah Abu Sanat, is that usually no predatory journals should not have a rank because they are not indexed in Web of Science. Okay. Okay. Oops. oops, 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 oops. Okay. All right, so let's go back to the strategies. Um, now, the publishing is kind of like learning how to swim as well to me. <laughs> okay, uh, when you want to start learning how to swim, you always um, try and go to a pool where you can stand. <clears throat> okay, so same thing goes for publishing. Don't jump straight into the deep end of the pool. Okay, um, sometimes some, that works, but most of the time you might hit a few bumps and kings here and there. So the strategy that you want to start with is probably to look for government accredited journals. So these are journals accredited and recognized by your local ministries of education or higher education. Uh, and for Malaysia, it would be um, looking at the local citation index called MySite, which is uh, curated by Mohi. Okay, so this is um, a good way to start looking for um, suitable journals that have already gone through some form of curation. Okay, then the next strategy is to then look at internationally recognized journals. So this is where you feel that, okay, I, I think I need to um, publish more in international journals and how to make sure that they are trusted. It's basically to use um, databases that are 
used by international researchers. So databases like Web of Science to find the high quality international journals. Then if you want to look for those with high rank and prestige, so this is where, let's say, for example, you are, there's a requirement by your institution to publish in Q1 or Q2 Web of Science publication uh, journals. Then this is what we call the ranking. And you would look at journal citation reports, specifically the Science Citation Index and the Social Science Citation Index journals. Okay, so um, as of current JCR, only the Science and Social Science Citation Index journals have a journal impact factor and they have a quartile ranking. And the quartile ranking is based on journal impact factor. Now, there was a question um, from earlier on. Let me just find that question. Okay, so Tan Siu Mei, um, I'm not sure whether you're here in the audience, but your question was, may I ask what is the difference between journal impact factor and JCI? And normally for ranking of papers Q1 to Q4, do we refer to JRF or JCI or both? Okay, so to answer that question, um, as I mentioned, the journal impact factor is the main um, metric that would be used for the quartile uh, definitions from Malaysia SMOSI. Okay, so for things like Myra recognitions or for your own institution, currently the journal impact factor quartile rank, journal impact factor quartile rank is the quartile that we are referring to. Okay. Um, journal citation indicator is a new indicator that we have on JCR, which I will explain later on. That also has a quartile, but currently because this indicator is fairly new, it has not been adopted by the um, uh, Myra body or Mohi body. Okay. Okay, so back to the strategy. Um, identifying the ranks and the proper quartile of the journals is important. But the other thing is about this strategy where you want to publish in high impact journals is that ultimately your topic has to be attractive to these high impact journals as well. So there's two things you need to take note of. Identifying the right ones, which are the Q1, Q2 journals. The second thing you need to do is make sure that you have a topic that is of interest to those Q1, Q2 journals. And most of the time, these topics are new research topics. They address something new. They show a breakthrough and it's important to the development of that field. Okay, so um, that might, we can come to that probably in the next um, session, which is uh, in February, where I will cover the research, um, identifying the research topics, to publish um, your research, okay? But just take note, um, just by purely identifying the Q1, Q2 journals may not be enough. You need to make sure that the topic that you have prepared for your research is also attractive enough for these high impact journals. Now, the last two strategies, uh, this would comprise of the indicators within journal citation reports. So aiming for journals that get cited very quickly um, this would be fairly useful for those who are uh, graduating. Okay, so for those of you who are students, um, imagine if you publish a paper and you get your citations quickly, that would definitely help in your CV if you want to continue in your research path. So to do so, some it's not always easy to identify these um, uh, cite these journals based on how quickly they get cited, because you need a lot of data to, cal to, to calculate. Okay, so on journal citation reports, because we have all the raw data of the journals and all the articles, we're able to see when citations come in for the papers. So we are able to calculate something called the immediacy index on journal citation reports. So the immediacy index is a uh, a metric that takes the citation counts for that year 
as as well as the number of papers published that year. So say for example, this journal published 10 articles, okay, and they have 20 citations in total for these 10 papers. So you take 20 citations divided by 10 papers, that will give you the immediacy index of two. So it means that there is a good chance that for every paper published in that journal, there is at least two citations. Okay, so this is an uh, a indicator that will help give you a kind of idea on potentially whether you can get your citations in the first year of publication. Okay. Then finally, um, the other metric that we're looking at is to find publish uh, find journals that get cited for a long time. So we are talking about uh, longevity of citations. Uh, of course, it depends on specializations. Certain specializations, certain research areas um, have a shorter time lifespan, but um, on average, most articles should have a citation span of about three years at least. All right. So the metric that we have on journal citation reports is cited half-life, which helps you measure in terms of number of years the um, the age of the papers that are still getting citations. Okay, so let's say a journal has a cited half-life of eight. Okay, it means that the, pa the papers that are eight years old in that journal is still being cited. Okay. So hopefully with these um, uh, five strategies, it is enough to help you to start on um, strategizing and thinking of where to publish and how you want to get published. Okay. So this then makes, brings us into the journal citation reports itself. And what I'll be sharing with you uh, in the next few slides is just some overviews of what you can see on this database. And I will also go into a live demonstration to show you the various functionalities on the platform. Okay. So what is the journal citation reports? It is a report that is published on an annual basis in June. Okay. So every year in June, we will publish a journal citation reports, and that is where the new journal impact factors of the journals will come out. Okay. And why is it important to use journal citation reports? I've already said this many times in my first few slides. It's about our selectivity and quality control based on our criterias. And at the same time, the indicators that we have on the journal citation reports um, is transparent. So you, you will be aware of how we calculated our journal impact factor, our journal citation indicators, and so on. And it will also allow you to look at the journals in multiple ways uh, because not all journals suit all manuscripts. An example that I wanted to share with you was, say, for example, there are two types of content. There's articles, there's review articles. Now, some journals publish original articles only. They do not publish reviews. So if you are publishing a review paper, there are certain journals that you are limited to. Okay, so that is just one example of the kinds of things that you have to consider when you're choosing a journal to publish in. So the journal citation reports, um, 2022. So the latest report is the 2022 paper that was released last June. Uh, we cover about 21,430 journals. And um, these are the breakdowns for each of the specializations. Uh, you can see that there are three journals suppressed in the 2022 release. It shows you that we actually do continue to evaluate the journals and if they indeed um, display unethical behavior, we do suppress those journals from the list. Okay. Um, if you have used JCR previously, we have uh, increased our coverage. So previously on journal citation reports, they, they only showed science and social science citation index, which is the journal impact factored journals. Um, now we cover all of web of science journals, which is close to 21,000. And um, one thing 
that I wanted to let you know was that for this year, 2023 release in June, this June, we are going to give the journal impact factor to all journals in Web of Science. So it means that even the Arts and Humanities Citation Index and Emerging Sources Citation Index journals will be receiving a journal impact factor in June. Okay. Um, the implications of this on the quartiles has yet to be finalized, but um, we will definitely be sharing more details with you as our product team uh, releases more details. Okay. So just take note, the good news is that all journals will have a journal impact factor, but um, the quartiles may differ depending on the health of their journal impact factor. Okay. But in the meantime, for, to, for now, the, those journals that currently do not have a journal impact factor on JCR, you will still see the other indicators available. So things like journal citation indicator will be there. Um, immediacy index, which I mentioned earlier on, cited half-life. Okay. Uh, I will not explain every single indicator now because um, immediacy index and cited half-life are usually the, the most relevant ones that I always recommend to researchers. Uh, eigenfactor score and article influence score is mainly used to show uh, how influential the journal is in the community of um, journals on Web of Science uh, because the higher the score for these eigenfactor score or article influence score, it shows more importance for that journal. Okay. Now, I wanted to sh explain a little bit more about journal citation indicator because this is a fairly new indicator. We released this two years ago um, and this can be used together with journal impact factor. Okay, so the journal impact factor, GIF, is um, a journal level metric. So that means we took, look into the citation counts for the journal as a whole um, and also the, the content that it publishes. The journal citation indicator, on the other hand, is an article level metric. So what this means is that we are looking at every single article published in that journal. The, there will be a performance measurement given to each article in the form of CNCI. So the, uh, the measurement that we use is category normalized citation impact to show how well those articles are cited. We will take the CNCI of all the articles and reviews in that journal and average it out across three years. And that is your journal citation indicator. So how do you read this? Very easy. 1.0, JCI 1.0 is always um, the global average. So if a journal is, is has this particular one, JCI of 0 0.74, it means that this journal is performing below global average in its subject category. If the JCI is 1.5, then it means that this journal is performing 1.5 times better than the other journals in its same category. Okay, so how can you use these two together? Uh, essentially, you will be able to uh, compare um, journal impact factor quartiles with JCI. So let's say if you look at all the Q1 journals in a category, okay? Um, currently, you can't tell which one is more impactful because it's just purely based on quarter one. But for JC, with the use of JCI, you can now see which of the journals produces more impactful articles, okay? So later on, when I do my uh, demonstration, you will be able to see this comparison more clearly, but now you have a better way to compare which of those Q1 journals is better. Okay, I mentioned about the additional metrics. So you have the immediacy index and other metrics that you can look at in JCR. 
Uh, you can also look at open access. So uh, within JCR, we, each of the journals have their own journal profile page. And within the journal profile page, you will also be able to see the open access breakdown. Some, some journals are full open access, some are not, okay, but they do produce some um, go open access content. So you, you, you will be able to see um, this breakdown within um, the platform. You can also look at things like citation distribution. Okay, so you will be able to see um, which content is cited more. So let's say if a journal publishes both articles and reviews, using this citation distribution chart, you can see whether reviews are cited more or articles are cited more. Okay. And you can also compare up to four journals at the same time, side by side. We also introduced new ways to browse the data. So we have um, grouped the categories into um, subject groups. Now the Web of Science uh, journals are categorized into 254 subject categories. So this grouping by subject allows you to drill um, from a more broader uh, subject categorization into the specific Web of Science categories. You are also able to uh, you're also able to browse by publishers. You are also able to browse by um, countries. Okay. Um, at the same time, we also have a journals API. So in the event that you want to um, integrate this with your internal systems, there is a journals API available. Um, so the slides will be provided to all of you. Um, I will send this off to the library and you will be able to retrieve this. But in the event that you need, you are looking at access to the journal's API, do reach out. Um, this is by sub additional subscription. Okay. Okay, so that's all the slides that I have. Um, the next thing I'll do is I'll jump into the live platform so that I can show you around. Okay, but let me just look at the questions that we have in the chat and address those before I go into the uh, platform. Okay, so based on earlier questions, let me just check. Um, Ms. Dayang, okay, I'm not sure whether you're here on the call, but how to find a good research top, good topic to research on in JCR. So the journal citation reports is essentially used to find journals rather than a topic. If you want to find uh, research topics, I would recommend you to use Web of Science to help you to identify gaps and emerging trends in research. Okay. Um, Dr. Kushairi Muhammad Saleh, your question was, can we cite a manuscript published in a fraud journal? even if the manuscript has reliable data and justified information. Okay, my question back to you is, if it's a fraud journal, how are you sure that it is reliable data and justified information? Provided there was, was there peer review done? That is the question. So there is some articles um, published uh, out there around uh, citation contamination. Now there's, this is a, a where a lot of researchers unknowingly cite articles from predatory journals. So um, what, this cause, what this might cause is that um, there is contamination in the form like um, the data was not properly verified through a peer review process, it was not uh, looked through properly. So you, it's, if your research was built based on unreliable uh, sources, then that also um, has a question mark. Okay, so just be careful of what you cite. Um, Professor Gurjit Kaur, can we trust that the journals listed in Web of Science are non-predatory? Uh, yes, so based on our curation process, you can easily see that we have gone through a very strict criteria to we, we use um, 28 criteria to evaluate the journals before they are indexed. And most of this would already help you to filter out the predatory journals. 
Ms. Manjula, any simpler strategy to follow to publish in Q1? Uh, I think I shared that in my strategy. So find the right journal. So if you're publishing a review, find the right Q1 journal that publishes review papers. And of course, make sure that the paper that you write addresses a need or a gap that other research currently does not uh, fulfill. Okay. Um, Dr. Andy Anderson Barry, your question is it worth publishing a research article with the publisher example MBPI with high article processing charges? Uh, how about an excellent publisher with journals uh, in AHCI or ESCI? Um, this question is a bit hard to answer. Uh, whether it's worthwhile publishing in a, a journal that has a high article processing charge. I guess it depends on whether it is widely read. Um, you would want to look at the readership. You also want to see its influence on the research community um, and whether the content of those journals are being cited by um, Q1 journals respectively. Okay. Um, okay, answered the rest. Let me see if there's new questions. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, Li Chin Yu, you have a question. Any impacts towards us if we publish in a journal that is removed or discontinued? Uh, I think that's a very good question and probably a question that has to be answered by your research office. Okay, um, in the year of publication, if it is still indexed in Web of Science, I believe most institutions still recognize that uh, article to be in that journal. So let's say, for example, your article was published in a journal in 2021, and in 2021, it was still indexed in Web of Science, then that would still be a recognition. Okay, but if let's say you have published, you, you submitted your paper to this journal um, in 2022, and um, just this month, it got delisted. Okay, but your paper has not been published yet then um, probably there will be no recognition. That means it's not accepted. Okay, so, so just take note of the indexation date and um, uh, delisted date. Okay, um, is there a platform that we can refer to check article processing charges at one place? Um, master journalist, so MJL uh, could be one way, but not every journal gives us details about their article processing charges. If they have mentioned article processing charges, we will show that on the master journal list, um, but if they have not, then it will not be there. So it's not a, a compulsory uh, information that the journal has to give us. Okay. Uh, Alexander Tan, your question, may I know, is there any method to look for journal without publication or processing fee? Uh, currently, it's all journal by journal. Um, you can do a filtering by um, non-open access journals. Okay, so most, most of the time, journals that are uh, open access are the ones that require a processing fee or article processing charge. So you can actually search for the journals based on the uh, open access level. So if it's non-open access, most of the time, there's no fees involved if you want to publish. If it's uh, open access, then um, there could potentially be some kind of fee. Okay. All right. So I think that's all the questions in the chat. Uh, let me just go to the live platform to show you around. Uh, before I show you journal citation reports, um, I just wanted to also show you Web of Science fairly quickly. Okay, to, uh, because Web of Science itself has some features that helps you to identify specific journals for a specific topic. Okay, so say, for example, um, now you are in, um, doing a research on hydrogen energy storage. Okay, you want to know which journals are publishing this topic. Okay, so if you're very specific in your research topic and you want to find specific journals, okay, this is the method you can use. So go to Web of Science. Do a document search on the topic. So what I like to do is just do a quick search on hydrogen energy. It 
doesn't matter whether you want to put in parenthesis, no parenthesis, it's up to you. Um, parenthesis would help you to define that you need to see this exact term um, in the text. Okay. Uh, otherwise, you can also use Boolean connectors like near. So near. Okay. To help you to define your search term. Okay. So let me try this search. So now I have 92,000 plus results um, on hydrogen energy. Um, but to make sure that I'm looking at the most relevant ones, there is this thing called Citation Topics Meso that is newly launched in Web of Science, where we have used this thing called Citation Topics Clustering, where we are looking at all the articles that are co-cited together. Um, you can also uh, see that those papers that are co-cited together start to form topic clusters. Okay, and we have built these topic clusters into things like hydrogen chemistry and storage, cat catalysts, photocatalysts, and so on. So if your research is on uh, hydrogen energy storage, uh, I think this one would be the most relevant. So I can select this topic and refine this. So I'm only looking at the, the storage capabilities. So with this, I can do an analysis. I can click on analyze results. Okay. And I can find the publication titles. So the publication titles here that are in the of science that publish hydrogen energy storage research is here. So we have uh, International Journal of Hydrogen Energy, Journal of Alloys and Compounds, Physical Reviews, Journal of Power Sources, and so on. So this is a, a more specific way to identify the journals in Web of Science that you can use for your specific topic. Okay. Um, Le Lenovo, you have a question on what is the application of near in searching. Okay, the reason why I put near is so that uh, I can find hydrogen within five words of energy. So that means it could be uh, hydrogen less solar energy. Okay. And that, that, that um, result was to surface. Okay. So um, a close, that means they are in close proximity of each other. Okay. Okay. So this is the, the, the um, feature that I wanted to show you on Web of Science. So coming into journal citation reports, this is where you start to browse the journal itself, the journals itself, um, based on specific categories rather than a topic. Okay. So if you want to look at journals in a specific category, you can go to categories. And you would see the subject grouping. Oops, sorry. I'm doubt. So just wanted to let you know for journal citation reports, there is no need to do a sign in if you are accessing um, on campus or via the, uh, uh, was it Open Athens that you are using on at USM? Okay, so once you're signed on Open Athens, you go to journal citation reports and web of science, you can start browsing without registering. But if you want to do some customization, like comparing and adding favorite journals to a list, then you need to register for your um, your own ID and password. Okay. Okay. So here are the groups, subject groups that we have. We have these broad subject groups. So let's say you are in economics and business. Then this would be the 21 Web of Science categories that you have. So if you are looking for uh, economics journals, okay, you can click on economics. And there will be two uh, options here. One under SSCI, one under ESCI. So what's the difference? Difference is that for SSCI this year, 
these are the ones that have an impact factor. ESCI are the ones that have no impact factor. Okay, so if you need journals that have a journal impact factor, then click on this 382. Okay, then you have two, 382 journals here that have a journal impact factor. Uh, by default, the indicators that you would see are the journal impact factor, the journal impact factor quartile, the JCI, and percentage of open access goal. If you want other metrics, there is this cogwheel here. You can click on customize and select the relevant indicators that I was explaining earlier on in my slides. So things like cited half-life, uh, immediacy index, and another one that I did not explain is percentage of articles in citable items. Okay, so we can apply. And you would see these indicators here. Okay, so let me explain percentage of articles in citable items. The journal's impact factor is calculated based on citation counts divided by citable items. Um, the citable items are articles plus reviews. So only document types that mention um, article and review will be included in the calculation for journal impact factor. So what does this mean? It means that um, here, for example, this journal, American Economic Review, okay, percentage of articles in citable items is 100%. It means that the, all the content is original article. So if you're writing a review paper, this might not be the right journal for you. Okay, same thing goes here for 99%, which is uh, articles. Okay. And then you have 82%. So it means that close to 17% of the articles, 17% uh, of the content is reviews. Okay. Okay. So that's the percentage of articles in citable items. The other thing that I wanted to explain here was about the use of the journal impact factor and the JCI. Okay. So Say, for example, here you have all the Q1 journals. Let's sort this by journal impact factor. So all these are the Q1 journals. And what you can notice here is that, say, for example, um, let's look at this one. Okay, so say economic geography. It is higher journal impact factor than this one, Journal of Economic Literature. But if you see the JCI, the Journal of Economic Literature has a greater JCI compared to Economic Geography. So the articles that are publishing here in Journal of Economic Literature is performing better than this other journal. Okay, so that's how you can start to use both the Journal Impact Factor and JCI in your uh, considerations. Okay, uh, Lenovo, you have a question. Um, if we want to know the title of our paper is new, mm, if you're referring to whether your, the research topic is new, um, I think it has to be worked the other way around. So before you even start writing your paper, um, you need to do a comprehensive literature search to find out what are the gaps in that research topic. It's only when you find that research gap then you can define a topic that is new to help advance research in that topic, that field. Okay. Okay, Ma Yuan, when I search for authors with more articles or high citation rate in Web of Science, I will find that the analysis results in Web of Science will regard different authors with the same abbreviation as the same author. Is there any way to find authors with high citation rate in a certain field? Um, so probably this is a question that will be addressed in a later session, but 
we are working on a web of science researcher profiles where we have included things like the author impact beam plot for um, authors. So we are show we we are working on being able to search for authors based on their citation performance um, uh, around things like percentile performance, average percentile performance, H index, and so on. Uh, but currently, um, there is no way to to search for those authors specifically. Uh, but you can search based on the article uh, and then be able to find which are the researchers that are publishing more in that area of research. Okay. Okay, that's time for peer review. Okay, so you have another question here. Um, for the understanding of and did not publish so far, do we have to search in all journals in Web of Science or searching in Scopus is enough? Um, okay, so so because I represent Web of Science, I would say search in Web of Science. Okay, but uh, of course, you, um, you would want to search in trusted sources. So those that you have mentioned, um, except for Google Scholar, should be a, a good and reliable source for you to search. Okay. Um, Karam Alali, based on these metrics, can we indicate which journal take less time in peer review process? Mm, no, so we do not show. Uh, so on JCR currently, we do not show the the length of time for peer review because it varies very much um by journal, and it's not something that can be easily kept consistent um for journals themselves because the peer review process can take anywhere from one month, three months. Okay, so it depends. Um, okay, Kisai, you have a request to explain the percentage of articles in citable items again. Okay, so um, citable items equals to article plus review. Okay, so only two types of documents are included in citable items, article and review. So if it's a 100% percentage 100% articles in citable items, it means that 100% of those citable items are articles. So it means that this journal does not publish any review paper. Okay, I hope that helps to explain. Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. One can publish. Okay. Uh, okay, is quota ranking sub reported by Schemago equivalent to JCR quota ranking? Um, so we have two different platforms. Uh, uh, so some of the key questions that people ask is whether um, the Scopus quota ranking and the Web of Science quota ranking is the same. Uh, no, it's not. So sometimes certain journals that might be indexed in both resources like uh, Web of Science and Scopus can have different quartiles. So on Web of Science, it could be a Q2. On Scopus, it could be a Q1. And the reason is because these two platforms are from different companies. We have different definitions of how we select our journals. We also have different uh, ways that we um, uh, categorize the journals. So, so that's why there's always a difference. Okay. Okay. Uh, Chua Fun Tang. Um, you wanted me to show you the search for articles by topic. Uh, later on, if we have time, I'll show that to you again. But otherwise, you should be able to review the recording and see that that particular part again. Okay. Uh, okay. So coming back to the uh JCR platform. So I've explained all these different uh, indicators to you. Each journal has their own journal profile page. So you can actually click into, say, for example, this journal, Quarterly Journal of Economics, and see the profile. Okay, so everything, almost everything you need to know about the journal is here. You can see uh, the publisher's information and address. Uh, all this is important, and the reason why um, we list this here is so that when you're on the journal's website itself, before you even submit your manuscript there, you're able to use this date information to verify 
to check whether they are indeed from Oxford University Press and so on, because sometimes there are all these fraudulent uh, journals that have the same title, but they might not be from that publisher. Okay. You can also see the publication frequency. So um, this particular journal has four issues per year. Um, could be a useful way to identify those journals that you can publish in because you only have three years in school. You don't want to be publishing in a journal that only publishes once a year. Okay. Then you have the journal impact factor um, here. So you can view the calculation. So we are transparent in our calculation of the metrics. You can see the citable, citation counts as well as the citable items. Okay. You can also look at the five year impact factor trend and also the citable items list. And from here, you can actually click through and click to view in Web of Science to view the abstract. Then you also have the journal citation indicator. Uh, so this journal has a site, uh, JCI of 6.8. Uh, it will mean that this is performing 6.8 times better than the other journals in this category. And this is the citation distribution that I mentioned in my slides, open access. Um, the ranking, this is where it come, becomes a bit confusing and I want to repeat this. So the ranking that we recognized so far by Myra and uh, Mohi is the journal impact factor ranking. Okay, so for journal impact factor ranking, this journal is a Q1 journal. Okay, and how we define the quartile is as such. So say, for example, here we have 381 journals in SSCI for economics. We divide 381 into four and the top 25% based on journal impact factor is your Q1 followed by Q2, Q3 and Q4. Okay. Then for JCI, um, this is where the number of journals covered is increased. The reason is because this would then include the ESCI journals and AHCI journals. And uh, even with this increase in the number of journals, this journal is still uh, Q1 based on JCI. Okay. Then the citation network here, um, if you scroll down, you see this thing called the journal citation relationships. This is a very useful tool to look at if you got rejected by this journal. So let's say you submitted to this uh, particular journal, quality of um, this particular journal, uh, and you got rejected. Okay, then where else can you submit your manuscript to? You could look at these other journals that have a citation relationship with the original one that you were looking at. Okay, so these are your alternatives, plan A, plan, plan B, plan C, plan D, and so on. Okay. And uh, if you scroll down further, you also see contributions by organizations, contributions by country. It, this would help you to see um, whether the content is very uh, Europe-centric, US-centric, or international. Okay? Because if your research is very Southeast Asia-focused, regional-focused, um, but the content here is contributed mainly by um, Europe, US, and so on, then it might not be very relevant. So that is something that you might want to consider. Okay. Uh, the other metrics here, I will not explain in detail, but you can always click on learn more to get a more detailed explanation. Okay. And this is the immediacy index. Okay. All right. So this is the journal profile page. Every journal will have this profile page. You can download, you can export this as a PDF. Or reference. Okay. Um, the other thing that I would I'll be explaining to you is about um, browsing and um, exporting. So let's say here with this list of 382 journals, you want to export this list, you can. So you can export this, uh, but just take note there's an export limit of 600. So um, the list that you have here on the table should be not more than 600 journals. Okay. 
Um, the other thing that many of you would also be looking at is, say, for example, the top 10% journals, okay, based on journal impact factor. You can use the filters here on the left. And go to journal impact factor percentile, GIF percentile. Choose 90 to 100, and that will be the top 10% and apply. So these 38 journals are the top 10% um, journals for that subject category. And then you can export. All right. Okay. Um, you can browse by publishers as well. So if you're keen to look at publishers, feel free to go there. And you can see the publishers with the journals, number of journals in Web of Science. And you can also look at countries. Okay. All right. And that's all that I have. Uh, in the event that you have further uh, need for training or need more support, there's always a resource center here. So this purple color question mark is a resource center. We have uh, product updates that you can refer to. You can also look at guided tours. So we have um, tours here and uh, help. Okay, this is uh, where it gets, uh, this is very important. Okay, you can always refer to the help guide to look at the suppressed titles. So we have a list of titles that we suppress that we list down here under the help menu. Okay, so title suppressions are here. So these are the latest journals that we have suppressed. You can review the previous year's list. And then we also have editorial expression of concern. It means that they have been issued a warning letter, but they have not been delisted yet. So perhaps this would be um, titles that um, of concern. Okay. So this tool is very important um, for you to refer to. Okay. Otherwise, there are also additional training resources that you can always refer to right here. Okay. And we have the videos and also a guide in PDF. All right. And that's it. Okay. So, um, now we, I think we have about 10 minutes or so um, that I am open to questions. Uh, feel free to unmute yourself to ask questions if you want to as well. Um, and we can take those questions. Otherwise, if, no, if you have no questions, um, do follow the instructions provided by the library on how you can access the resource and also how you can get your CPD points. Okay. Let me see, any questions that I missed in the chat? Let me have a look. Okay. Otherwise, anyone else have any questions? Just type the questions in the chat. I will also share my email address uh, in the chat box. So if you have any questions after today, you can also drop me an email. Uh, if you have any questions about um, uh, content being indexed in Web of Science or JCR, we also have a, a support email address you can write to. Okay, uh, Alexander, you have a question. May I know if we should follow the GIF or JCI ranking? Uh, as I mentioned, just follow the GIF ranking because that is uh, the ranking recognized by Myra and Mohi and also your institution. Okay. okay, so I think a lot of you are asking about the ranking. Uh, we always use journal impact factor rank, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, 
Okay, Arina Wati, you have a question about the publisher report. Uh, okay, so I think what you're referring to is the publisher report here. Okay, so this um, publisher's report leads you to the insights analysis about this publisher. So if you click on this, it takes you to our other platform called Insights, which I believe you still currently have access to. So uh, Insights allows you to uh, analyze a lot of things. It, you can analyze uh, institutions output, you can analyze countries, you can analyze research areas, um, and also publishers. So by looking at this publisher report, you can see that um, what is the total number of papers published by this publisher in Web of Science, how much of it is open access, and also the most cited documents. Okay, then. Um, under organization publication profile, this is where you can look at your contribution to this publisher. So let me just find university science. Oops, science. Okay, USM. Okay. So this is USM's contribution to Springer Nature Journals. Okay. And this is uh, your contribution. 0.11% of your published documents are in Springer Nature uh, journals. And this is the citation con um, distribution. Okay. So this uh, kind of helps you to see uh, everything about a publisher, but also your institution's contributions to that publisher. Okay. And this would then perhaps help you in your collection management um, in terms of the journals covered by that publisher. Okay. Since we are here on Insights, um, just one thing to note, if you want to explore more on Insights, you have to register for your own account. So um, do log in via Open Athens to reach Insights and then register for your own ID and password. And immediately you can analyze a lot of things like organizations, uh, uh, research areas, and countries. Okay. And it is also a very quick way to export um, the list of journals from journal citation reports. Because on JCR itself, there's a limit of 600, whereas on Insights, there is no limit. Okay. So, say for example, you go to publication sources. Okay, here you can um, look for journals in a specific research area. You can filter this to say any research area, or you can stick to just Web of Science, and this would be all. Okay. Okay, and if you only want JRF Quartal 1 journals. You can filter this down to JRF Quartal 1. And you can then export. Okay, so you can change this to uh, the 2021, which is the latest year. And this would be all the journals in 2021 that have that are in Q1. And you can export using this drop-down menu of this 3,000 plus records, okay? Okay, and that's all I have for you. Doesn't look like there's any additional questions. Uh, let me see. Okay, uh, Alexander, you had another question. May I know if the journal has several different rankings in different categories, which ranking should we follow? That's a very good question. So let's say, a uh, journal is in multiple subject categories. It could be a Q1 journal is in one, Q2 in another. Um, for Myra recognition, I believe they take the highest. So that means if it's a Q1 in any of those categories, it is a Q1 journal. Okay. Uh, Kisei, you have a question. Is Insights free of charge? Uh, I believe now USM still has access to Insights. Am I right, Jake Ramla? Yes, yes, students yeah. still get access to insights. 
yeah, so you still have access to um, uh, insights. Okay. Oops. No, Rafida, you wanted to share content. <laughs> Okay. So let me just take back, yeah. Okay. All right, so um, to access insights, as I mentioned, you need to register for your own ID and password. Um, just do that, and then you can start exploring this database. Uh, I believe we have one webinar session specifically on using insights itself. So take note of the date from the library and register for that if you want to come for that um, session. Otherwise, once you've registered, there is a help section, um, which would give you more details about insights as well. All right. So that's all I have. And back to you, Chit Ramla. Yes. Um, thank you very much, Chulin, for such an insightful presentation. I believe we have learned a lot from the session today. Sorry, no video because my video is, is not so so nice. It's uh, it's dark actually. That's why I don't uh, on the I do not on the video lah. Okay, so I think we have come to the end of our webinar. Again, on behalf of the USM Library, we would like to express our fullest thanks to our participants, especially to our speakers for spending your valuable time with all of us uh, this morning. We want to apologize as well for any inconvenience during this session. Uh, before we end, don't forget to fill in our e-feedback form to get e-certificate and CPD points to USM staff. Okay. Also, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and like our Facebook page for the latest updates and uh, upcoming events. With that note, thank you once again. See you next time. Take care, everyone. Uh, stay safe. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. Bye. Bye.